you may end up having bypass also. So this is uh, this is this is something which is completely preventable. And what do we do these days about fatty liver? The, somebody checks your liver fat and says, okay, this is, this is uh, you have got grade one fatty liver. After ten, five years, come back and see me in two years. Two years, they say it's grade two now. And grade two becomes more fibrous and more organized, irregular, lumpy liver that it becomes a cirrhotic liver. Once you develop cirrhosis, oh, sorry, we can we can't do anything else. You have to go and stand in line to get a new liver. And you see, the Lenin Radinger recently passed away. He had a liver transplant. His son donated part of his liver. And that liver has got a phenomenal regenerative capacity. Even only 5% of your liver to survive, to completely replace and function with your normal liver. Okay? That is a liver is a sewage organ of the body. You can abuse it to the core. You throw all kinds of garbage, you know, alcohol included. Or, and it, liver does a phenomenal job of metabolizing it and protecting you from damage. But it, every organ has got a shelf life. Okay, each organ is designed to survive for about 100 years. You extract the life of that organ earlier by packaging all these kind of things and unwanted colors, unwanted preservatives and all those things you package into, into there. Liver finally becomes embarrassed and throws up and says, and that is when you begin to see the liver inside slightly going up and you look at the cholesterol panel, you see high triglyceride, low HDL. This is all one process. You stop that process, every organ will come back. There is no reason for fatty liver patients to just to not get any treatment. People give, there's a very expensive profession called arso deoxypolic acid. That is extracted from polar bear livers. Polar bears don't get gallstones. So some people thought that polar bear livers protect, what is the ingredient in there? They, they extract this product and they started selling it. And it's expensive and people just prescribe it. What does it do? Nothing. It doesn't do any damn thing on the liver. And finally, you end up with grade 1 to grade 2, and then grade 2 to grade 3, and then cirrhosis. So they'll go and stand in line for getting a liver, which is so unfair. Liver surgeons are extremely happy. They salivate when they see a, a liver, uh, fatty liver patient. But this is very simply treated with just a 5 OP pill. Okay, that is the sad part of it. Unfortunately, patients don't realize that. We uh, encourage the use of uh, fatty fish, which is salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines. Tuna Matti Ayala, this is what I tell patients. And make it into a curry, not Varatara Chakari, not using coconut oil, Pacha Tenga Italy, Molokita Curry. And encourage people to eat two or three fish. I still remember Grigari Father Grigari telling Valami, the Namachur Varachi Matti Varatara. You know, wonder when you are in school. That is a very, very valid document even now. So, because we are experiencing that the fatty fish is the only fat that human beings can, can digest and, and which can, does not have any health concerns. And it opens up blood vessels which go to the legs, to the brain, to the eyes, and also prevents uh, dementia and cleans the liver. So I think I think I will stop and I, I can go on and on talking about so many different things, but uh, it is, uh, I don't know. You, you just made us sinful. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. 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 Visceral fat is very, very concerned. That is part of the pork Yes. Ah, and chicken curry. <laughs> because we are eating. No, one, one second. Food, yeah. Yeah. It's so time for food. another toast for the ladies. Yes. yes. They sit and we stand up and raise a toast for oh, them. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the second toast. You are getting all the exercise. For the, the second toast for all this wonderful ladies. <laughs> Who made <laughs> us what we are today? For all these wonderful ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for the praises. With love and affection. Is it your turn? Eh? I asked you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, insulin, there's a question about, uh, about how to use insulin. If people using insulin. Uh, insulin is a, is a tightly coiled molecule, so it's like a like a strand of rope which is played and then braided and then looped and tied into, into a knot. That's how the insulin looks like. So it, it maintains that that uh, integrity only in cold temperature. So that's why every insulin is packaged with the instruction to keep it refrigerated between two degrees to six degrees. But unfortunately, 
people uh, have, have been given the instruction that when you're using Excel pens and all that, you can use it for about 14 days, 25 days, 28 days, things like that. Different companies issue their own instructions. Please do not follow that because it is in our weather here, if you leave a pen outside for more than X number of hours, it will, this coiled uh, structure will uncoil and becomes trans again. Once it becomes trans again, you put it back in the refrigerator, it does not recoil. So it, it loses about 50% of its efficiency. So what happens is your sugar control gets lost little by little. And next time the doctor sees you and says, oh sorry, your sugar is not in control, let us double your insulin. So the net effect is the company is able to sell more and you will be wasting insulin inside your body. So keep it refrigerated, number one. Number two is where to inject. People are, are confused as to uh, advice people. Some people inject in the arms and legs, some people inject in the stomach, around the belly button. The ideal spot to inject is on the sides of the stomach. The reason why we say that is because as long as uh, the insulin should be first presented to the liver and this area drains to the liver, whereas in the arms and legs it circulates in the, in the blood, comes to the heart and gets to the liver little aches. So you lose some efficiency of, of the insulin. So the quality of the insulin and also the uh, spot side of injection. The needles on pens and all that, some people doesn't, do not change the, the needles for days together. So what happens is that the sharpness goes away after five injections. So ideally speaking, every five injections you change. The instruction does typically to change the needle for every injection. But for economical purposes and all that, if you are hermetically sealing that after each uh, use, you can use the same needle for up to five injections. So that is the, the type of injection. Any time when you see, you know, you, for a person who is in good control, you are su suddenly you are picking up a new batch of insulin, you are injecting it, all of a sudden the sugar goes up to 200. If there is nothing to explain your change of diet or anything like that, all of a sudden you see that you should always suspect the quality of the insulin. You may be keeping it in the refrigerator, but you did not know where that came from. So it could have come from a, a vendor where he, would, he turns off the, the lights and fans at, at night time when he goes home. And next day he starts and turns off because you save the electricity. I mean, this is very commonly done in, in Canada and in India. So that is something which, and also when the, uh, the, the manufacturer ships to the stockist and from the stockist to the, to the vendor, there are several chains there where you can sometimes break the cold chain. It is usually shipped in boxes where there is dry ice and the dry ice leaks out or if the refrigeration component leaks out, it sits in an airport tarmac for hours, it becomes warm and it has already uncoiled. And the, of course, when it comes to the vendor, they promptly put it in the fridge and by the time you get it, it will be cold, but you have lost its potency. Previously, there used to be temperature-specific uh, color-coded markers on